Welcome to the Vista 3 by Chroma Q video training series. In this video, we will learn how to modify Vista's fixture chooser to create layouts that allow you to efficiently program your show. Vista's fixture chooser is the third navigational window. When creating a new show file, you are presented with all of the fixtures that are in your show, all within a single default layout. Each of the square or rectangle icons on screen represents an individual fixture in your show. By default, Vista will automatically create groups of the same fixture type. These groups will also be added to the layout and are represented by the Pentagon icons. It is important to mention that once your patch and connect universes are configured correctly, you will have immediate control of your fixtures within this screen, and you can start programming straight away. However, it is beneficial to customize Vista's fixture chooser to your personal preference. Fixtures or groups can be selected by left-clicking on them individually, or multiple items can be selected at once by left-clicking in an empty space and dragging over your desired items. Once selected, these items can be moved by hold left-clicking on any one of them and dragging to your desired location. Let go of your left mouse click to complete the move. The fixture chooser can be navigated in a number of ways. Users can zoom in and out of a layout by using the scroll wheel on a mouse or by using the zoom buttons found towards the bottom left of the fixture chooser. Clicking the zoom plus or minus buttons will also zoom in or out of the layout at predetermined levels. If you would like to achieve a finer resolution of control, left click and hold on one of the zoom icons and then imagine an invisible slider. If you move your pointer up and down, you will be able to finally adjust the zoom level. Let go of your left click to set the current level. The zoom to fit all icon will scale the fixture chooser to a point where you can view all fixtures in the current layout. Once you are at an appropriate zoom level, underneath each fixture you will see the fixture number and the label, which you defined in the patch. Both of these can be adjusted from within the fixture chooser by right-clicking on your desired fixture and selecting Label or Renumber from the menu that appears. Right-clicking is also one of the easiest ways to further customize your fixture layouts. In this next example, we will create two layouts, one for the moving lights and one for the static profiles and park hands. If we right-click in an empty space, Vista's contextual menu appears with Layouts being the top option. From here, there are five options. New Layout creates a second layout with every fixture and group contained within it by default. Duplicate Layout creates a copy of the exact layout you are currently working in. This can be useful if you want to make some slight layout variations without having to remake everything from the beginning. Label Layout names the Layout tab. Delete Layout permanently removes the current layout from the show file. Manage Layouts opens a pop-up window where further layout properties can be defined. This window is divided into three columns. The Layout column shows you your current layouts. So far, we only have one layout, which can be seen here. Item Visibility on the right-hand side shows you all items which are available to be viewed within a layout. Primary items here are fixtures and groups. Next to each of these lines, you can see a little drop-down arrow. Pressing this arrow will expand each section. You can see that you can expand right down to individual fixtures. If the checkbox next to an item is ticked, it means that it is visible within the layout. To hide an item in a layout, simply untick the item. If we untick all groups, LEDs, and dimmers, you can see that they disappear. They haven't been deleted from the show file, they are simply hidden in this layout. Another way to quickly hide items without having to open the Manage Layouts window is to right-click on the fixtures or groups and press Item and then select Hide. The only way to add a fixture back into a layout is by checking the Item Visibility box within the Manage Layouts window. To create a second layout, at the bottom right of the Layouts column, you will see a plus and minus button. The minus button will delete the currently selected layout and the plus button will create a new one. Here, we can see a second layout with everything visible by default. The layout can be renamed by double-clicking and entering a new name. Let's call this layout Par Cans and Profiles. 
In this layout, we will once again use the Item Visibility column to deselect all groups and moving fixtures. Now we have two layout tabs, one for the moving lights and one for the static fixtures. We will explore the layout properties later in this video, but for now, let's further customize our park hand layout. Currently, all of our fixtures are grouped together in the order that they were patched. It is often advantageous to split fixtures up. In this example, we will arrange all of the blue, red, and amber park hands together. We will do the same for the profiles. As mentioned, fixtures can be moved around by left clicking and dragging around the chooser. Vista also has a number of arrangement tools to assist you in your layout creation. To use one of these tools, first select the fixtures that you would like to arrange and select the desired tool from within the right click menu. The first is Arrange in an Arc. Arc size, rotation, and angle can be adjusted by clicking and dragging the appropriate line. To apply this arrangement, simply click away from the fixtures. This same interaction style also applies to Arrange in Circle. The Arrange in Grid interaction is slightly different. Here, you need to define your desired number of rows and columns. You can choose to increase or decrease the spacing between each icon if you wish, but Vista will automatically take into consideration the fixture icon's physical size. Clicking OK, we can see two rows and three columns, arranged by user ID. Vista will always arrange grids top left to right and then work downwards. Individual fixture icon colors can be customized to suit user preference. The default icon color is dark gray, but in this example, we will change the icon to become blue to provide visual aid that these fixtures have blue gel in them. To do this, select and right click on the fixtures, select items, and then icon color. From within this window, you can choose a new color using the color picker or select the leaf filter color. Pressing OK, you can now see that the icons are blue. When we eventually get to controlling fixtures and give some intensity to these units, you will see that the default gel color is white. You can also further customize this to provide additional visual feedback. To do this, select and right click on the fixtures, select Fixture, and Customize Gel Color. The same color picker window appears, but this time it will apply to the intensity part of the fixture. Let's repeat this process for the other types of fixture. Other tools available within the right-click fixture chooser menu are Align, which lines up all icons to the far, top, bottom, left, or right edge. By selecting top in this example, you can see that all icons are in line on the top edge. We can repeat this step for the bottom set of fixtures. Distribute places each icon at an equal length between each other in either a vertical or horizontal plane, calculating from the first and last fixture within the selection. Flip switches the icon's placement in either a vertical or horizontal plane. Fixture icons can be rotated by selecting Items and Rotate. Click and drag the control handle that appears to rotate the fixtures through 360 degrees. Click away from the rotation to apply the current angle. Icons can be made larger or smaller by selecting Item and Resize. If you press the fixture chooser's zoom in or out icons, this will apply to the fixture icon. Click away to apply the new size. Useful tip! Icons can also be quickly resized by holding down the yellow console modifier or the control or command key on a keyboard and clicking the fixture chooser zoom icons. Pressing the zoom to fit all items will reset the fixture icon back to its default size. Notes can be added to the fixture chooser in text form and moved around the space like any other item. Notes can also be zoomed in and out in addition to being able to be colored. If a note is created whilst the fixture is selected, Vista will draw an arrow to that selected fixture. Let's go back to our moving light layout. This layout contains a number of multi-element fixtures, namely the Robey Robin 1200s and the ProLite Stark 1000s. The Robins consist of four controllable elements arranged in concentric rings, whereas the Starks consist of 19 controllable elements arranged in a spherical array. By default, Vista will display all multi-elements horizontally, but you can customize this to enable you to work visually. 
we will customize the Starks first. To do this, right-click on one of the fixtures and select Customize Fixture Arrangement. From within this window, you are able to arrange the elements just like you would any fixture icons within the main fixture chooser. The same arrangement tools are also available here. We will use the Arrange in a Circle tool for each ring. Once you are happy with the overall layout, click Next. In this step, click the elements in the way that they are physically arranged within the fixture. Once complete, press Finished. Vista will ask you if you want to save this arrangement to your user data. Pressing Yes means that this custom arrangement will automatically be used every time you patch this fixture in new show files. This process can be repeated for the Robin LED washes, but this time we will zoom each element and overlay them to create concentric rings. We can use the Fixture Chooser Zoom, Distribute, and Align tools once again to complete our moving lights layout. Let's create a third layout. We will duplicate Layout 2 to give us a rough starting point. Background images can be added to Vista's Fixture Chooser by right-clicking and selecting Background and Background Image. Images can be selected through the browser window. Once opened, the image will be imported into Vista's Fixture Chooser. Fixture icons can now be arranged on top of the image. Useful tip! Zoom Vista's fixture icons to match the background image size instead of resizing the image to match Vista's default fixture icon size. Sometimes you may have a single dimmer hard patch to multiple fixtures. This is the case for our blue, red, and amber parkans. Fixture icons can be duplicated to represent this. To do this, right click and press Duplicate Icon. This action can be repeated as many times as you need. To remove a duplicated icon, right-click on the icon that you would like to remove and press Remove Duplicated Icon. Useful tip. If you hover over a fixture icon, Vista will pop up a tooltip. Within this tooltip, it will tell you the fixture number and label, type of fixture, and where it is patched. Vista can take you to the patched universe if you right-click and press Fixture and Find in Patch Table. Let's revisit the layout properties of Layout 2 within Manage Layouts. The properties for each layout are found in the middle column. Lock Positions fixes the icons in place within the chooser and can no longer be moved or zoomed. This option can be quickly toggled on and off within the bottom right of the chooser. Fixtures show intensity value. Dynamically displays the fixture's intensity percentage level within each fixture icon. Shows Labels, hides or displays the fixture name underneath each fixture icon. Shows ID, hides or displays the fixture number underneath each fixture icon. Show Element IDs. This is for multi-element fixtures. This hides or displays the element number within the fixture chooser. This action can be temporarily engaged by holding down the blue console modifier or equivalent keyboard shortcut. Labels ignore rotation. Labels of rotated fixtures can be fixed so they do not rotate with the fixture. Labels ignore zoom. When selected, labels will dynamically compensate for the fixture chooser's zoom level. The label will always be legible. However, when significantly zoomed out, it may overlap neighboring fixtures. Notes ignore zoom. The same applies for notes. All notes will dynamically compensate for the fixture chooser's zoom level. Auto show new fixtures. If this option is checked, every time you patch a new fixture, it will automatically be added to this layout. Auto show new groups. If this option is checked, every time you create a new group, it will automatically be added to this layout. Useful tip. Once you have completed a layout, you may wish to uncheck both of these options so that no new items appear here. Snap to Grid. The Fixture Chooser does have a background grid by default. If you would like your icons to snap to the nearest point or adjust the spacing, these settings can be adjusted here. Finally, if you have a number of settings that you prefer, you can save these as default so that each new layout that you create will use these preferences. To learn more about Vista or to download the free demo software, please visit vistabychromaq.com.